Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas More as we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's readings can be found in your hymnals at number 1166. Again, that is 1166. Our opening hymn can also be found in your hymnals at number 590, Christ Be Our Light. Again, that's number 590. Please stand and join in singing. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With Morning, everybody. Morning. This weekend, the Lord inviting us to be attentive to the little things in our life. So we think about these past few days for those times that we failed to show mercy, for those times that we failed to show kindness. Let's ask our God to forgive us. Lord Jesus, you call sinners into your all-embracing love and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you gave yourself as a ransom for all. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to eternal happiness in heaven. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only God and Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God. Let us pray. 
O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this, you who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. When will the new moon be over, you ask, that we may sell our grain and the Sabbath that we may display the wheat? We will diminish the ephah, add to the shekel, and fix our scales for cheating. We will buy the lowly for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals even the refuse of the wheat we will sell. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, never will I forget a thing they have done. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, 
and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and in dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and men. The man Jesus, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was a testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth, I am not lying. Teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish then that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this that I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, what shall I do now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, how much do you owe my master? He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for 50. Then to another, and you, how much do you owe? He replied, 100 cores of wheat. The steward said to him, here is your promissory note, write one for 80. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth so that when it fails, you'll be welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. 
The person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, I try to have some sense of routine in my life, as hard as that is most days, but Saturday mornings is kind of like my, my, my chosen time that I covet with great protection. I get up, the Lord and I have a little conversation, I go and try to do some kind of exercise, and then on well, most Saturdays you can find me at a local breakfast place having breakfast with my dear friend Karen. We get to catch up on all the church gossip. She might work at another parish, and so it's always fun to catch up on church life. And so we were at the restaurant a few months ago, and we have our routine, right? You go to the register. You order your stuff. You go over to the coffee station. You fix your coffee. We go to the table. We, we, we talk. We gossip. We eat. We don't gossip. It's not gossip if it's a prayer. <laughs> I read that on a towel somebody gave me, huh? And so one, one Saturday morning, we're sitting there, and Karen always has her bag with her, and she's, she dumps it out. I'm like, what, what are you doing? She's like, well, I, I can't find my wallet. I'm like, well, it was your turn to pay. I saw you pay. You just had it. Where's it at? Well, well I don't know. So she's looking all over, and, and then it hit me. I, I remember seeing something on the coffee station. And so I'm like, it's over there. Let me go get it. So I wander over to the little coffee station, and there is this beautiful child of God. There she stood, and I'm looking around. I'm like, where did it? Where's where's her wallet? It it was right there two minutes ago. Where's it at? And that beautiful child of God just standing there. And I look, and I notice she's got like a stack of napkins in her hands. And in the stack of napkins is Karen's wallet. And before I could say anything, she obviously saw me wandering around looking. She said, oh, is this yours? I was going to bring it to the register. (laughs) I mean, when I'm wanting to bring something to the register, I normally hide it in napkins. (laughs) So I gave her that lovely little smile well, thank you, you're so kind. And then I walked back to the table and we spent the rest of the hour talking about that child of God. (laughs) And it was funny, this weekend it came up in discussion again because now the the restaurant has one of those uh, credit card machines where you you shove the card in front of the register for them, right? And we got to the register to order and the gentleman in front of us had left his card. And so the good priest grabs the credit card, runs out the door to catch the fella, gives him his card. I mean, I could have I could have kept that card. We could have ordered kneelers with it. You know, we could have done a lot of things, but no, I did what was right because that's what we're supposed to do. But isn't it interesting how hard it is for us some days to do what is right? To do the right thing especially when nobody else is standing at the coffee station next to you and nobody can see because you're blocking that wallet that's in front of you and all you got to do is surround it with napkins some days it's hard for us to do what is right and yet it's one of the constant calls of Jesus' ministry, calling us to be people of integrity, calling us to be honest, calling us to be trustworthy. The parable in this morning's gospel is the parable of the steward. And it's one of the parables that 
there's a, a deep dark side of me that really likes, but I'm probably not supposed to like it so much. Because here's this steward who was a, a very good businessman, right? He, he took care of business. He had been entrusted with the farm by the landowner. And so his responsibility was to collect the rent from everybody, to make sure the books were tallied. And that's easy to do. And as long as nobody is checking on him, it was also easy for him to just skim a little bit off of the top. Nobody is watching. Nobody's checking the books. I'll just skim a little off the top each week, right? But then the landowner gets wind of it because somebody else, you know, when you see something, say something, that's the phrase, right? So one of the other farmers saw him skimming off the top, calls the landowner and said, hey, you know, your steward that you've trusted so much with, he's stealing from you. So the landowner calls him in and says, you stealing from me? That's what they tell me. I want an accounting of the books. Now, this would never happen in today's world, right? We got HR for this, right? <laughs> this guy's still employed and is, is able to do the accounting of the books. No, we'd have taken the books, we'd have taken the keys, we'd have changed the password and sent him on the way, right? So he's like, oh, all right. I'm in, and this is my favorite part of the gospel, right? Well, I can't beg and I'm not really good at digging. So I got to have a plan. I'm about to lose my livelihood. I'm about to lose my job. And so the steward comes up with this amazing plan. I'm going to go to everybody that owes the landowner a debt. I'm going to call them in. We're going to play, let's make a deal. So he calls the one with the biggest debt. This, this specific person owes a hundred measures of olive oil. Here's your promissory note for 50. Go. Calls the next one in. He owes a, a hundred cores of wheat. A core is a, a type of vessel to hold something. A hundred cores of wheat here. Here's yours for 80. Now, when he handed out those new promissory notes with those deductions, do you not think he said, now when I come to your house and need a place to stay, you better open the door and remember what I did for you. When I come by and want to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, remember what I did for you setting himself up to succeed because he got caught stealing the parable of the steward today probably the we should call him the wise steward right because he's a pretty smart fella but at the end of the day who was he serving was he serving his landowner who had cared for him giving him a job, taking care of him? Or was he serving himself? The scriptures would go on to tell us today that those who are trustworthy in small matters are trustworthy in great. Those who we can't trust in the little things, we surely wouldn't trust them in the big things. You know, we often complicate the scripture we often complicate what God calls us to do and how God calls us to live and and today Jesus puts it out there for us if you want to grow in holiness if you want to be my disciple if you one day want to experience eternal life well don't steal don't cheat don't be dishonest right it's not complicated but Think for a moment. What are the small things that sometimes we find ourselves ignoring? What are the small things that so often tempt us and then we say to ourselves, it's just a little thing. I forget back in high school we were having a, a morality discussion in class and one of my fellow students, good Italian fellow like myself, he just said, you know, I don't understand. I mean, if I steal a Snickers bar from Walmart, what's a Snickers bar to Walmart? I mean, Walmart's a multi-billion dollar business. They're not going to miss a Snickers bar. Well, yeah, there is actually some truth to that, right? What's a Snickers bar to Walmart? Probably nothing. But what does it say about us and the decisions we make in regards to the small things? 
The scriptures would say if we can't be trusted in the small things, how will we ever be trusted in the big things? And then the reality, the reality is that the small things are the big things. Mother Teresa would tell us to be faithful to the small things because it's in the small things that we find our strength. If we are faithful in the small things, that when the big moments of being tested come about in our lives, then we're able to make the right decision, the just decision, the honest decision, because we built on being honest and truthful in the small things. We always think of that example of the, uh, the good old supply closet at the office. Well, it's just one little pack of paper because I forgot to get that on my child's list for school this week. I'll just borrow that. But think of the other small, and you getting in line, and all of a sudden you see that other register opening up. And so you put your head down and go fast, even though you saw that man right there go before you. Don't look at him. We're going to get there ahead of him because it's very important that you save that 1.2 minutes. The small things speak more about who we are and whose we are often than the large things. Jesus calling us this week to be aware of what we do in the darkness. Think about that for a moment. We use the darkness in our world so much to mean all that is bad, but in reality, the darkness is where no one can see. The power was out in the neighborhood last night and I rolled up to the church to check on things and came in here. It was dark. To be aware of what we do in the darkness, to remember that we are called to be light, even in the darkness. What we do in the darkness truly will define who we are. When nobody's looking, when nobody's counting, when nobody's paying any attention to us, might we be people of light in the darkness? Might we strive in the days ahead to truly be honest, to be trustworthy, and to live our lives with integrity? How will we go about the days ahead? How will we be attentive to the small things so that God might trust us even in the large things? I believe in one God. Amen. Uh-huh.
St. Paul asked Timothy that his prayers and petitions be offered for everyone. We follow Paul's counsel today, making our prayers and petitions for all God's children. For the church, may she be an effective witness for honesty and justice, speaking out with courage against systems that take advantage of the weak. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who exercise authority, may they be honest and trustworthy in handling the matters that are entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the poor, may God lift their burdens and help them to find ways to meet their needs and prosper. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who teach our Catholic faith, parents and catechists, may they be filled with abundant grace and wisdom as they pass along the love of God and his church to children and adults. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have died, especially Ivy Alfred, Donald Tubbs, Richard Dupuy Sr., Marguerite Spustek, and Susan Price, and for the intentions of this Mass, may they be lifted up to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. We pray in silence for our intentions and for the intentions of all. Of your creation, grant us the grace to share your goodness with those most in need as you hear all of our prayers that we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in our Auditory Hymn, which may be found in your hymnals. It's number 47, The Cry of the Poor, number 47. <laughs> It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer. To Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas More and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and religious and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you've gathered before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
unison and sing our communion hymn, which may be found in your hymnals, as number 735, Blessed Are They, number 735.
Don't forget this morning that the blood mobile is here in front of the activity center. So if you're able and willing to give the gift of life through a blood donation, please do that. They'll be here till around noon. I invite you to offer that gift this morning. I was going to tell you this week of all the great things that are going to happen in the construction project over the coming week, but since everything I told you last week didn't happen, I'll just tell you that we'll all be surprised next week. How about that, huh? Um, I do hope it's a great week for you. I'll ask your prayers for us this week. There, uh, this week in New Orleans, 345 priests from across the state will gather for our conference. We do this about every four years. So we'll be down there and uh, I get to wrangle the cats again. So pray that I don't kill any priests and um, we all come back alive and happy and renewed. But it's a great chance for us to have some fellowship. I always chuckle because people are like, oh, do you know Father so-and-so from Alexandria? I don't have a clue who Father so-and-so is from Alexandria. So it's just a chance for us to be in fellowship with each other across the state. And we've got some great speakers coming in. Here's your uh, Catholic tidbit for the morning. The Apostolic Nuncio will be joining us. So the Apostolic Nuncio is as important as it sounds, right? So this is the, the Pope's representative for the United States here in America. So every country has ambassadors. Well, Italy, the Vatican is its own nation, and so it has ambassadors as well. So uh, the ambassador for the United States will be joining us in New Orleans this week. He's also kind of like the bishop maker. Don't worry, I'm not asking for any new jobs. Don't worry about that. <laughs> there will be some though, you know, you know how that is. Um, but so it's just going to be a great week for us. We'll be there Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and ask your prayers as we uh, take a little time for fellowship and education and prayer together. Know that we will be praying for you this week. I really hope you'll take that invitation to pray and to, to think about what are the small things that might need a little attention in your life this week. What are the little adjustments that God might be inviting you to do so that you might grow a little deeper in your relationship with our Savior this week. I hope it's a good one for you. It's always great to see you. See so many of you here this morning and all your little families. Lord, if you've got little kids next to you today, before them people leave, like tell them that it was great, no matter if it was or wasn't, right? Because it was great because they were here this morning with us. And so always happy to have our families with us and all our little ones. Uh, we seem to be growing which is an awesome gift for our community. So hope you have a great week, everybody. Let's pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our lives through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please join and sing our closing hymn, which may be found in the hymnals, as number 596. Praise to you, O Christ our Savior. Number 596.